for the most part throughout its history, the humble guitar pick has been kind of thought of as a, a cheap throwaway. But the guitar pick star is rising and more and more companies are taking guitar picks to new heights. Changing your guitar pick is one of the easiest ways to change your tone and add something different to your playing experience. Today we're gonna to talk about guitar pick pricing. Why are some picks so expensive and others really cheap? There are several things that affect the pricing of a pick, but we're gonna focus on three. Manufacturing process, materials, and the market. Let's talk about the manufacturing process first. Keep this in mind, complexity affects cost. The first step is to get the basic shape of the pick. Probably the least expensive manufacturing process is the punch. This is where a die simply punches out the pick shape from a flat sheet of material. You can even do this yourself at home with a punch and that credit card you shouldn't be using anyways. The modern version of the punch technique would be the laser cut, but not all materials can be laser cut. Some materials are flammable or can even off-gas toxic fumes. True story. Then you have injection molding. Injection molding is used if you need a more complex shape than an absolutely flat pick. So if you want a molded grip pattern, logo, or pick that has unique form factor, you would injection mold them. Bog Street picks, for example, are injection molded. So the first step for most mass-produced picks would fall into one of these categories, but your more craftsman-style picks might be made differently. They could be poor molded or cut with a CNC machine to get the, the basic shape. Once you have the basic shape, you typically need to finish the part. Picks cut from a flat sheet of material, depending on the thickness and the quality, might still need to have the edge finished somehow. It might be tumbled, sanded, or even hand beveled to finish the edge. Picks that are injection molded typically need to have a manufacturing artifacts removed. So on most injection molded picks, you can usually see the mark where the sprue was cut away. Since Bog Street picks are three-sided, we injection mold our picks one at a time from the center, so we have a perfect 360 degree edge. Then we cut each pick away from the center. That's very satisfying to watch. So you can see how having more steps in the manufacturing process adds to the complexity, adds to the cost. The more you have to handle a part, especially if there's any kind of manual process, the cost goes up. Adding screen printing or laser etching logos and information on the pick, one more step, added cost. So what about a pick's material? You already know that a uh, pick's material affects things like tone, durability, flexibility, and, and feel, but how does a pick's material affect price? Today you can find picks made from all kinds of materials, but let's just focus on plastics because that covers the vast majority of picks made today. And of course, not all plastics are created equal. The plastics used for rocket parts are much different than plastics used for a disposable spork. You would naturally expect one to be more expensive than the other. Before the rise of modern plastics, the earliest picks were made from organic materials like bone or turtle shells. The advent of celluloid plastic in the late 1800s revolutionized consumer products and gave manufacturers a moldable alternative to using organic materials. Most celluloid plastic is one of the least expensive materials and comes in sheets. Then the picks are typically stamped out using the punch method. So for the most part, celluloid picks are typically where one of the least expensive manufacturing processes meets one of the least expensive materials. Other common materials in most mass manufactured picks are ABS, nylon, Ultem, and acetyl resins like Delrin. All these materials are thermoplastics, which just means they liquefy when heated and harden when they're cooled. They come in pellet form and are used in injection molding. Sometimes materials require special processes or equipment and that can also affect cost. On top of that, you have different grades and many companies are developing their own proprietary blends and formulas and that can affect, affect cost as well. Essentially, companies are trying to dial in the perfect balance between tone, durability, flexibility, and feel. And sometimes things are a trade-off. For example, Ultem is very durable, but it doesn't flex very well. So is there a very expensive plastic out there? Although they don't publish it on their website, rumor has it that blue chip picks are made from a material called Vespel. And it's probably one of the most expensive plastics used for guitar picks. Vespel is actually used in aerospace and semiconductors because it has extreme heat resistance. So if you ever drop your pick in a, a deep fryer or on the surface of Mars, you're totally covered. Anyway, blue chip picks are probably cut from a laser or CNC machine and then hand finished. 
So this is an example where a very expensive manufacturing process meets a very expensive material. You can expect to pay $35 to $75 for a blue chip pick. There's so many other plastic resins we could talk about, but the main takeaway is that just because something is plastic doesn't mean it's cheap. The last thing I want to talk about uh, probably affects the price more than anything else, and that's market. So let's say you want to start a guitar accessory company. Think about the difference between companies like Jim Dunlop, Fender, the Adario that have been around for multiple decades. And then there's your small startup that nobody's heard of. Both companies might be making great products, but one has massive global distribution and brand recognition, and the other has to somehow put themselves on the map. I can tell you from firsthand experience that rising from obscurity is very expensive. For new companies to compete with the 800 pound gorillas in this space, we have to grind it out, build trust, and pay a premium to build brand awareness. That's just business. But also think about operations and economies of scale. Those companies in the accessory market have large scale operations with generations of expertise and infrastructure. Small, independent companies are manufacturing in garages and small scale operations, failing, learning, improving, and evolving. We have to pay our dues as our expertise grows, and that doesn't come cheap. Finally, the most important market force that affects pricing is you, the consumer. Companies will only make what you're willing to pay for. If having inexpensive throwaway picks is important to you, companies will make that. If you're willing to pay $25 for a guitar pick that you want to pass on to your grandchildren, companies will make that. Ultimately, consumers are the force that are shaping the guitar pick industry more than anything else. At Bog Street, we take guitar picks pretty seriously because we understand that the pick connects the player to the instrument. Bog Street picks are not the most expensive and we're not the cheapest either. So hopefully now you have a few insights and things to consider before plunking down your hard earned cash on your next Plectrum investment. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please share your comments. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like more content like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now go grab your pick, no matter what you paid for it. Now let's go play.